as planning developed with the rattlesnake dam removal project, we realized pretty early on that we wanted to have monitoring as kind of an integral component of that. Um, and you know, the, the main goals for monitoring, obviously the top tier goal would be what is the, the impact or the efficacy of our dam removal project? What's the impact of dam removal on fisheries, on riparian habitat, um, on aquatic habitat, on user uh, access to, to trails, all of those things. Um, and then the secondary goal and kind of woven into all of this is, can we use monitoring and science as a way to engage with our partners and engage with the, the community? That, that kind of was the, the comprehensive monitoring plan. What are the questions? Who's already answering those questions or collecting data that can help us get to that? And then from there, how do we need to kind of bring our partners and ourselves up to a level of, of being able to kind of fill, fill those existing data gaps? And so, you know, one of the really cool and, and interesting and, and probably the most engaging part of all of this was the citizen science piece. So Stream Team is a really awesome way to directly encourage people to come observe, collect data, and participate in their own watershed. And I think from when's beginning, we really wanted folks to come outside, engage in their backyard streams, take a look at what's going on, pay attention to change over time, and what better way to do that than encourage them to volunteer, come out on weekend activities, come back year after year, and our goal is active citizens engaged in their watershed long term. And our hope is to mobilize this into other watersheds eventually. What's really cool about Rattlesnake Creek is it's, like Deb said, it's everybody's backyard. I mean, people are coming here all the time. They're really engaged in this watershed. You have kids playing in the stream. You have dogs around, um, picnics, yoga in the park. And with the dam removal, that's only about five miles up from the confluence, right, in town, people want to know about what's going on. And the folks that are really passionate about this dam removal, um, they, want to, they want to be out in the stream and they want to feel like they're part of this. And so we're kind of tapping into that. We are allowing these folks to put waders on, get in the stream and collect those bugs, do the cross sections, look, figure out what the water quality is, and then they can go home and they can tell their family members, their kids, their, their parents. When we give them the tools and we, you know, really, really explain these protocols and they understand what they're doing, they're going to keep coming back. It's critically important for the protocols to be something that can be repeated in a systematic way. So uh, originally the protocols were not as accurate in terms of where we'd come back to the exact place to work and we've built that now into the uh, protocols so that um, and we've also increased the precision of some of the implements like using this uh, uh, level that uh, we did with the cross sections. So one of the most uh, phenomenal opportunities our organizations had with the partnership with TU and working with RLF is our partnership with UC Davis in the citizen science piece that they're developing. So our understanding is they're developing a citizen science model that's going to take um, our example here in the Rattlesnake in Little Missoula, Montana, and have that be a highlight in an, a, a manual they create nationwide about re dam removal and watersheds throughout the country. So we have an opportunity to work with the staff at UC Davis to really zero in on our citizen science piece, develop it more fully, allow them to survey our volunteers, network with them about great ways to engage and retain volunteers through their um, community and citizen science program at UC Davis. So it's been really rewarding. In 2020, we've basically come out and collected baseline data at the uh, dam removal site itself and then really throughout the creek. So this year was you know, highly focused on just getting that baseline data collected. Next year, we'll basically it's, it's our first opportunity to see what's the immediate impact of, of dam removal. So some of these impacts we're going to be able to see right away. The, the dam is gone. We have a barren construction site with a couple of little seedlings on it, right? Um, and so next year, we'll coming, be coming back repeating those baseline surveys, but one year post-restoration. 
And then the idea is that, you know, long term, we would be coming out on the third year, fifth year, 10th year after removal and kind of seeing what that progress looks like, both at the dam site itself, but then also within the, the broader system. This past spring, we had 30 plus volunteers come out several days and help catch just through through angling, through you know casting from the shore, catch trout. Um, we would tag those trout and re-release them back into the stream. What that means is that over the next couple of years, as the community is out in our rivers and streams and fishing, and those those tagged trout are caught, we have a website that, that TU developed where those fish can be reported. And so really, I mean, this is a program that relies really, really heavily on our community and on citizen science. It will not work without, without volunteers actually calling in and reporting. Um, so people basically say, this is the fish that I caught. This is the number that's, that's on the tag. Here's a photo of it. They can upload it to the website. Um, and it allows us to see where the fish, the, you know, the 180 fish that we caught at the mouth of Rattlesnake Creek, where they've ended up. So we had, you know, within a couple of months, we had a Rattlesnake Creek fish that was 20 miles um, upstream in the Clark Fork. You know, just things like that, that we can, we can see not just where they're going, but when they're moving. Um, and so it's a really neat opportunity to better understand how fish are moving throughout the system, when they're moving through the system, and, you know, hopefully, potentially, to see how this newly accessible habitat in the upper Rattlesnake Creek is being used by fish, um, that, you know, I ideally we would be able to see fish moving up through there that hadn't previously been able to pass in the spring.